suspense. Tonight, Autolite brings you a story of a man who suspects a murderer is holding as hostages his wife and child. A story we call Strange for a Killer. Starring Mr. Van Johnson, who is currently starred with Jane Wyman, Howard Keel, and Barry Sullivan in the Metro Golden Mayor production, Three Guys Named Mike. Before our play begins, here is a word about Autolite from a good friend of ours. This is Harlow Wilcox with phrases of praises about those mighty mites, Autolite spark plugs. The spark plugs that are ignition engineered to work as a team with your car's ignition system. They're designed by the same Autolite engineers who design complete ignition systems for many leading makes of our finest cars. Autolite spark plugs give you smoother performance, quick starts, and gas savings when you have them installed in place of worn-out spark plugs by your friendly Autolite spark plug dealer. He'll compare your present spark plugs with the exclusive Autolite plug check indicator, a special device that helps him recommend the type of Autolite spark plugs best suited for your style of driving. Now, if cleaning or adjustments are needed, your Autolite spark plug dealer has the equipment to do the job quickly and efficiently. And if replacements are needed, he's the only one who can offer you your choice of Autolite standard type or resistor type spark plugs. So, folks, see your friendly Autolite spark plug dealer this week, because you're always right with Autolite. And now with Strange for a Killer and the transcribed performance of Mr. Van Johnson, Autolite hopes once again to keep you in suspense. hard for me to remember how it began. It started just like any other day. We had no way of knowing it would end like this. It seems like such a long time ago, that phone call to Jesse. But it can't be more than just a few hours. Only a few hours since that ride home with Buck. I thought how impatient I was to be here. I haven't been putting in overtime lately, not with Jesse out of the hospital and little Johnny here and just beginning to know me. I couldn't wait to see them. It's been like that every night. I guess sometimes it's best we don't know what's coming. How's this, Henry? Swell. Anywhere along here, Buck. Thanks, Buck. You sure you want to stop in for a minute? You haven't seen the kid yet, you know. Gee, I'd like to, but I got to get home early myself tonight. The wife's got some kind of a meeting. I'll have to take care of my own kid. Okay. See you tomorrow. Night, Hank. Good night. All right. Hey. Hold it right there. Oh, I didn't see you, officer. What's wrong? You'll have to wait a while. You can't go down that street. Well, that's where I live. What's the matter anyway? There's no one in sight. The whole block's deserted. That's how we want to keep it. Yeah, I'd like to get home. My wife's waiting for me. You'll be a little late. Well, wait a minute. Look, when you keep your voice down and stay back, you get hurt if you don't. You after someone? Right, Jaleska. Jaleska? But he's wanted for murder. That's right. And he's been living in this neighborhood? Where? Right across the street, down three doors. The cop every ten feet from here to the river. Better go back in that drugstore and wait. Call your wife if you want. Yeah, I think I'd better. What'd you say he was? Across and down three doors. Yeah. We're in the apartment house right next to it. You don't think there'll be any gunplay? Just tell her to stay inside and keep the door locked. She'll be all right. Thanks. Hi, Charlie. There's that Jaleska guy there after you know. He's been living in the boarding house right next to you. Yeah, I know. How long has it been going on, Charlie? It's been almost a half hour now. A half hour? What are they waiting for? Don't ask me. I got here about 5.30 when the police were just coming in. They only took about five minutes to cover the block. Then a party of six or seven went in after him. And they haven't come out? No. Oh, I've been watching. Why, I wonder? You didn't hear anything that sounded like shooting. No. Hmm. Ought to hear something by now. Does seem funny, doesn't it? Unless he got out of his room. But he couldn't get far. I want to get Jesse on the phone. She'll be wondering why I'm late. Oh, sure.
what's the matter, honey? I thought you weren't going to answer. I was looking after Johnny. Are he okay? Just getting hungry. Well, go ahead with the supper. I'm going to be late. I don't want to scare you, Jess, but there's going to be a little trouble next door. I don't want you to leave our apartment. Trouble? Yeah, the police are after someone who's been hiding out in the boarding house next to us. The whole block is surrounded. I won't be able to get home till it's over, and you're not to come out. Yes. There's nothing to be afraid of, Jesse. All right. Just stay inside and keep the door locked. There's no need for that now. Goodbye, dear. What? Jesse. Hello? Charlie. Oh, yeah? How high is that boarding house? Is it three stories? That's right, just like your place. And that alley between them, how wide is it? Oh, pretty narrow, I guess. But there's a cop on both ends. On the roof, Charlie, could anyone make the jump across? Is it too wide for that? I, I don't know. She didn't sound right, Charlie. She talked quick, quiet, like she wanted to get off the wire, like... Yeah? Like there was someone with her, Charlie. <laughs> I tell you, I spoke to her on the phone about ten minutes ago, and I'm sure there's something wrong up there, Captain. What makes you sure? She was afraid of something. I know she was. Something right there in the room with her. I didn't notice how different she sounded until I hung up. Where do you live? The boarding house? No, the apartment house next door on the third floor. Rotor. Yes, sir? Carl's got some men going into the apartment house next to Jalaska. Stop it. Yeah. He's in there with her, isn't he? He's in with my wife. I don't know, fella. He could be anywhere now. You didn't find him in his room? No, he's not in the boarding house. I knew it. He's with Jesse and my son. Take it easy. Hayden. He got across the roof, didn't he? Our apartment is on the top floor. He could get in easy enough. Maybe. Let me go up there, Captain. Please let me go up there. I want to be with my wife and kids. Sorry, Hayden. If it's true, he'll use them as hostages to make us hold our fire. It's better that there are only two. Oh, what difference does it make? Would you fire any sooner because there are only two? It's not it at all. We're not even sure he's there. You haven't given us any real proof. The only way you can make sure. Look. Now, look, if everything's all right, if he isn't there, I'll call the drugstore and have him tell you so. If he is, I'll... Well, I'll let you know somehow. We can think of some kind of a signal. You can't stop me anyway. It's my home. My wife that's in danger. I have a right to be there. I could stop you, mister. I should stop you. But you won't. I can go? All right. Listen to me. Yeah. You may be wrong about this, but... What do you want me to do? Go straight to your wife. Don't do any investigating on the way. No looking down the alley or around corners. Go there and lock the door behind you. If you pass anyone you don't know on the stairs or in the halls, keep going. And don't look back. He's trapped, Hayden. He's scared now, and he'll kill you if he thinks you're onto him. I know. If, if he's not in your place when you get there, and he probably won't be, call headquarters and ask for Grimes. I'll have him standing by, and he'll flash the message to my car. If he is there, there's nothing I can tell you. You'll be on your own. But don't try to signal. You wouldn't get away with it. And it's not necessary. If I don't get your call ten minutes after you go in, we'll know. Yes, sir. I can say this, Hayden, if he's there. Don't try anything brave. You know what I mean? Yeah. Looks easy in the movies. It usually works for the good guy. But this isn't the movies. And you'll have three lives at stake. Just relax or whatever he tells you. Keep a good distance from him. Don't make any quick moves. And above anything else, don't watch a clock or the streets down here. He's been in spots like this before, and he'll know what it means. I know. That's about all I can tell you. Just be careful. We want this man, Aiden. We want him badly. But we don't want anyone hurt getting him, least of all a private citizen. Understand? I do. Thanks. Okay, Captain. Carl's holding up his men, but he wants to know the score. Get him over to my car order and have his men surround the apartment house. Block every exit and put someone on the fire escape on the first floor, but no noise. Do it quietly. Yes. Okay, Hayden. You can get going. Yeah. If he's not there, get the call in right away. Sure. <laughs> and I didn't look around. I knew he might be anywhere now, around the next corner, hiding in the shadows that were on every side of me, and up the stairs on the first landing. The 
second. But I couldn't turn back, and I didn't dare slow down. And I saw the door to our room was at the head of the apartment house stairs. He was there. I knew it now. I could almost hear the heavy silence behind the door as he listened while I came closer. I hesitated only a moment. I knew what I'd say. I lifted my hand to the door. Jesse? Uh, Jesse, it's me. You all right? Jess! Honey, what's wrong? Why didn't you answer my knock? Honey, is everything okay? Jess, what is it? Come to him. You sounded so funny over the phone. I thought there was something wrong. It's okay, isn't it? Why don't you answer me, Jess? Henry. Where? Where? What? Get your hands over your head. Get up against the wall. But don't make any noise. Or I'll kill you. Autolite is bringing you Mr. Van Johnson with Michael Ann Barrett and Jack Moyles in Strange for a Killer. Tonight's production in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Friends, it's Mr. Van Johnson in Elliot Lewis's production of Strange for a Killer. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Our arms grew heavy. We leaned back against the wall and I saw Jesse turn white. And our eyes began to close with fatigue. The room was quiet and there was no noise from the streets outside. We could only wait. I watched him in the shadows and remembered what the captain said about trying anything brave. But he was smaller than I thought, and only a few feet away. And I wondered if it would really be so hard. I'll try it, mister. This is a forty-five. I'm not afraid of your gun. It's because you've never been hit. You're bigger than me, and I know what you're thinking, but don't try it. I'm warning you. You won't ever know what it means to wish you could die till you get a slug in the stomach. Henry. It's all right. I know he means it. I mean it. It won't do any good, you know. No matter what happens to us, no matter how long you stay here, they'll get you. Listen, they're guys just like me. Those blue suits don't make them supermen. They make mistakes like everyone else. <laughs> they already made a big one. Oh. They shouldn't have sent you. My wife didn't sound right when I spoke to her over the phone. I came up to find out why. Yeah. She gave it away. She's sorry about that. Jesse, did he? It's all right, Henry. Please, it's, it's all right. Did he hurt you, Jesse? Never mind that. She just got out of the hospital. Would you like to see her go back? I hope they kill you. They might. I thought about it. I guess maybe you better start thinking about it, too. It'll happen next time you make a crack like that. Henry, don't. Don't, I'm don't. going to ask you a couple of questions. And you're going to give me the right answers. The right answers, mister. The first time you'll get hurt bad. What do you want to know? Where were you when you made that phone call? Drugstore, across the street. And your wife don't sound right. You think maybe something's wrong? Yes. You want to get up here? You want to find out why? Yes. What takes you so long? What? We don't hear you coming up the stairs till almost 15 minutes after she hangs up. What are you doing all that time? No. No, at first I wasn't sure she did sound like there was something wrong. It was only after I hung up and got to thinking about it that I started to worry. And then I made up my mind to come up, but it was later. You don't stop to talk it over with the cops? Oh, why should I? How can I know it was you in here? Cops all over the block looking for me, searching every building. Street's probably closed off. And your wife sounds scared over the phone, but she won't say why. Sounds like someone's with her, but she won't say who. And you don't think it might be me? Well, yes. Maybe I began to. You don't say nothing to the cops, though. No. Just come up all by yourself. Yes. 
You sure of that? Yes. <laughs> okay. No! No! Yeah. What do you take me for, a kid? There's a line of cops five feet thick around every building in the block, and no one gets through unless they let them. You're here because they put you here, and I'm giving you just five seconds to tell me why. What's the big plan, eh? He's hurt. Get him, he's hurt. I don't know about their plan. I don't know what they're going to do. But they know you're in here. Don't stop. I did go to the police when I thought it was you here with my wife. I don't think they believed me at first. But I talked the captain into letting me come anyway. If you weren't here, I was supposed to call him right away. And if I was? Nothing. Just wait. And if they didn't hear in ten minutes, it meant... It meant I couldn't call, that you were in this room. You? What time is it? I... Too late. Much too late. They know, Jaleska. There's no more searching. Down there in the dark, around this building, they're all together. You haven't got a chance. They know. I got a chance. As long as I ain't alone, I got a chance. You, lady, go get that kid. Why do you want him? We'll do anything you say. You don't need to touch our kid. You look okay. You don't want to hurt the kid. Nothing will happen if you do like I tell you. Get him, lady. All right, Jesse. Henry. It's all right. I'm sure of it. You haven't got much time, Zaleska. You know it. Killing our baby is something you wouldn't do. You can bring him in, Jesse. You're so sure this is the end of the line for me. And those cops down there, so sure. Well, I'm telling you, I got lots of time. And you're going to help me take it. Yeah. That's right. Now back up to the wall. Peel off that jacket. What? You heard me. Take off that jacket and throw it on the floor. Sure, why not? What are you going to do? <laughs> I'm not going to do anything. You're going to take it for a while. What do you mean? You don't see it, huh? I'm kind of surprised. I don't see any way out for you, if that's what you mean. They know you're here. Yeah, they know I'm here. You made sure of that, didn't you? So they're covering every way out. Doors, windows, alleys. What do you suppose would happen if I tried one of them? I think they'd kill you. Yeah. Yeah. I start out that window and every cop down there comes to make sure I don't finish the trip. Maybe a couple come running up here. That leaves lots of cops down on the bottom of the fire escape. And a couple of cops up here in the room. But not many anywhere else. In the alley or on the streets. Or uh, down near the river. They'll all be watching the guy in the fire escape, won't they? And the guy in the fire escape, he don't need to be me, does he? It won't work. You're crazy to think that'll work. I gotta take that chance now. You're going out that window, mister, and you're gonna take your time doing it. They've seen me. They know what I look like. They saw a guy in a leather jacket right close up. Now you're a guy in a white shirt, three stories over the street, coming down a fire escape. That makes you a different guy. That makes you Roy Jaleska. What if they start shooting? The minute I step out that window. But if they do, it's a chance you gotta take. You don't want me to take all the chances. Ah. Oh. A little guy. Bring him in. He's asleep. You. He's asleep. What's his name? Johnny. Johnny, huh? That's a nice original name. Cute little kid, too. I don't guess you'll put up any arguments, will you, mister? No. No arguments. And I'll be right here with both of them until I see our little schemes working. So don't try no tricks on the way down. No. What does he mean? Henry, what's going to happen? You can read about it in the papers, lady. Now go turn out the light. Light? Turn it out. But don't try nothing, neither one of you. You got your kid in here now, and there's no telling who'd get hit if I had to shoot wild. Turn it out, Jesse. The light, come on. Now you, the window. Let him go out there. They'll think he's you. They'll kill him. Jesse, it's all right. Hold on to Johnny and wait for me. It'll be all right. Henry. 
I stepped out onto the iron platform and started down as slowly as I could. But they'd seen the light go out, and already I could hear quick moving on the street. I could feel every eye begin to follow me down the narrow steps. Jaleska was right. It was going to work. Oh! happening too fast. They'd find out too soon who they really had. And then I knew there was a part of the plan he hadn't told me. I jumped back against the wall. But it was already too late. From the window behind me, he fired down into the police. Their guns flew up automatically, and everyone was aimed at me. I was pain. Pain that came from everywhere. And I could hear the shouts and bits of brick fell as the bullets hit around me. There was shouting that faded away. Waves of pain. Other voices. Henry. Other voices. Henry. Don't touch him. Let him alone. He's losing blood. I've got to have a doctor. You'll get a doctor, lady. Why don't you go? What are you waiting for? Haven't you done enough? He's been shot. He's hurt. And you stand there. I thought you wanted to get out. Well, get out. Get out now. Jesse. Henry. Henry. You'll be all right. Don't try to move, darling. You'll be all right. Is he gone? No, mister, I ain't gone. Our little scheme. Don't look like it's going to work. It should have. No reason it shouldn't. But they're moving up on the stairs right now. Don't move, Henry. We'll, we'll get a doctor. It'll, it'll be over in a minute. You're glad, huh? Oh, I, I'm not glad. It's ugly, all of this. I feel sorry for you. Oh, don't. I've been running for a long time. I think it'll feel good to stop. It's funny. When they're after you, when you're running away, you look the same, act the same as you always did. But it's different on the inside. You're all tight and twisted. No matter what you're doing, you can't relax. Can't get a good deep breath. Yeah, I think I'm almost glad. Alaska, Roy Alaska. Oh, those guys are going to do a lot of bragging tomorrow. We know you're in there. Come out with your hands up. They finally get me. Jaleska, dangerous guy. You killed a man. Yeah, I killed a guy. I got mad, real mad. Things happen when you get that way. Things you can't stop. But when it's over, no matter how it happened, you're different from anyone else. You're a killer. One day you're just a guy, and something happens and you're a killer. Please go. Please, haven't you heard us enough? Sure, I'll go. Why not? Don't make much difference now, eh? Buddy, you know what I mean, don't you? You're just a guy. Yeah. Put your gun down. Maybe they'll give you a chance. Chance? What chance? I've been waiting for a chance all my life. Give her the gun. It'll be better. Forget it. Get out of the way, lady. I'm going out. You wouldn't... You wouldn't try... Why don't you let me have your gun? Get back. Get way back. Jesse. It's all right, Henry. That's it. Stay there. I... Stay just like that. Henry. Okay, Frank. Hold it right there. Don't come any farther. Where's Johnny? In the other room, way in back. There are six guns with you, Zalesta. You haven't got a chance. Drop that thing and come down with your hands over your head. shot at me. And then there was at least a half a minute when he could have gotten out that door. Why didn't he? What made him wait? Don't talk, darling. It's all over now. What happened? Tell me. When the police fired, he, he started for the door. He was almost out. And he stopped. He, he came back, Henry. They were still shooting. He, he went out onto the fire escape and lifted you into the room. And he started out again for the door, and we could already hear police on the stairs. It was too late. Is he all right? I don't know. I, I think so. We can get a doctor, please. One's on his way. Take it easy, mister. You're going to be okay. Just lie easy. Yeah, sure. It's funny. Huh? 
Not funny. Strange. Strange for a killer. Tonight's star, Mr. Van Johnson. This is Harlow Wilcox repeating a reminder to remember the raft of reliable Autolite products. There are over 400 of them for cars, trucks, planes, and boats made by Autolite in 28 plants from coast to coast. These include complete ignition systems used as original factory equipment on many leading makes of our finest cars. Generators, coils, distributors, electric windshield wipers, voltage regulators, wire and cable, starting motors, and many more. They're all engineered to fit together perfectly, work together perfectly, because they're all part of the Autolite team. So, friends, don't accept electrical parts supposed to be as good. Ask for and insist on Autolite, original factory parts, at your neighborhood service station, car dealer, garage, or repair shop. Remember... You're always right with Autolite. Next week, we are privileged to present the second Academy Award winning star to appear on Suspense this month, Miss Joan Crawford in Three Lethal Words. The following week, we will have as our guest Mr. Jack Carson. And on April 5th, in his first appearance on this program and only dramatic appearance of the season, America's favorite comedian, Mr. Jack Benny, on Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis, with music composed by Lucian Morawieck and conducted by Lud Gluskin. Strange for a Killer was written by Robert Essen and adapted for Suspense by Anthony Ellis. Portions of this program were transcribed. In tonight's play, Michael Ann Barrett was heard as Jesse... Jack Moyles as Jaleska, and Larry Thor was Captain Case. Others in the cast were Joseph Kearns, Jack Crucian, and Richard Benedict. And remember, next week on Suspense, Miss Joan Crawford as a woman who set out to destroy the only thing she loved, her husband. A story we call Three Lethal Words. Autolite resistor type or standard type spark plugs. Autolite.